Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where today John Coleman and I get to speak with Michelle Fabrica, our love and relationship coach. Hello, John. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Art. Hi. Hey, Michelle. Good to see you. you Michelle, can... um, you know, your, your title, love and relationship coach, really, for me, um, holds a very, very broad um, area of expertise. Um, relationships, you know, can be very intimate or they can be business like, and I recently, I was in a conversation. This has happened to me a couple of times now. Um, I was in a conversation and the, and the popular phrase comes up, don't even go there. And, <laughs> and it's, it's not so bad, but what bothers me about this is I feel like the person I'm talking to is controlling the conversation. Well, why can't we go there? And I, I think I would like to be able to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I'd like to be able to have the presence of mind uh, to direct the conversation where I want it to go. Well, sometimes I do, but I've found it just seems to me that everybody's doing it to me. And I'm, <laughs> I don't have that same kind of discipline to mm. uh, direct the conversation. I'm mm. I'm on the receiving end, not the the control end, and I don't think I'm a control freak. But I'd like I'd like to do do the opposite more often. Is that am I saying it so it makes sense? Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I really appreciate you brought this up because I think this is something that it is something we can all develop, right? And you know to kind of basically be learn to be an observer when we're in a conversation with someone and to notice like, is this going in the direction I want? Are we getting to the point that I want to make here? Or am I just being, you know, kind of uh, dragged along in a direction that is not really where I want to go in this situation. So, so basically I think it's so valuable to be what, you know, you're in the conversation, right? But there's also a part you can cultivate maybe where you zoom out a little bit and you observe what's happening here. So you basically mm -hmm. are almost like having a, you know, in your mind, like you want to maybe take, pause the action and have a conversation about the conversation. Yeah. So it yeah, might I, be like- I like, I like the word zoom out. I like that, that imagery because uh, it is easy to get sucked in, <laughs> the opposite of zoom out, get sucked into a conversation and 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 kind of you're you're going. You, you, it takes a while to realize where all of a sudden I'm talking about stuff I didn't want to talk about. Mm. Right, right. Or you're getting heated up about something that it's like, wow, why is this right. getting me upset here? I don't want to get upset in this moment or something. So, so yeah, I think many of us use these kind of um, techniques, right? But maybe we don't think of them as something to cultivate and to get better at. But you know, like for instance, if I'm working with a client, I'll ask them. What are their intentions about having this conversation with their partner, for example? And so it's basically like, so that inviting them to zoom out, like, well, I want to feel closer to them, or I want us to not always fight about this same issue. So basically we're helping in advance kind of prepare for what is the goal here? You know, not every conversation is not going to have a goal, right? But sometimes you actually want an outcome. You want to feel more relaxed. You want to feel more connected to them. So it's basically like helping us first plan a little bit about something. How do you want to feel at the end of it? How do you want that person to feel at the end of it? So when we plan a little bit in advance, it goes better. And yeah. even another you know, way to do it is to plan and then share the intention with the other person. And I think I've talked about this on in another video, but that's just, this is just one way of seeing it is that we reveal our intentions. You know, I really want to talk about you know, what happened um, at that event and I'm still upset about it. Are you open to talking about it? So you're basically, I'd like us to feel more um, at ease with each other. And I'm kind of feeling, I'm not feeling that right now. So you're basically sharing kind of, you know, t telling what you're wanting to happen. It, it's going to go better if you, mm -hmm. if you start with that. You know, when, when uh, uh, John posed this uh, to you and you first started uh, talking about this, uh, I was thinking from a somewhat slightly different perspective when you're involved in a conversation, whether you've started it with somebody else and um, you find yourself 
getting so myopic with a subject that you didn't you don't want to be involved in that close. So in the heat of the moment, being able to step out of the conversation and think, what should this conversation really look like? How can I shape it so that we're not talking about how uh, big a problem it is that we're going to be facing in the next 30 seconds, but maybe you're on vacation and you want to redirect this conversation to, all right, well, we've got to get through today because the water heater broke in this rental cabin. Okay, but we'll get through that and then we're going to go uh, uh, skiing later on today or tomorrow. So let's take care of this and not dwell on a, a particular negative thing. So how to step out when you're in the moment uh, yeah, and do well, that? I mean, that's part of it. It's sort of like, you know, we, we, we kind of sometimes can be, uh, forget that we can pause the action, almost like a director would with a film set, right? It's suddenly like, oh no, we're not quite going in the right direction here. So we get to say, you know, in advance or even in the middle of the conversation, you know, I want to, I actually want to talk about this, but would you be able to just listen for a bit because I'm not really ready to hear ideas yet about this. So it's sort of like helping the conversation go the way you want it to go. Another might, might be where somebody is starting to talk or maybe even gossip about someone that, you know, you both know that it's just starting to feel kind of icky and you just, yeah, you know, maybe you want to just, hey, you know what, I'm kind of wanting to talk about something else right now. I just, I really want the best for that person and I hope they're well, you know, whatever, some kind of way of like kind of, let's not gossip, but maybe you don't want to use that word because that might be offensive to the person you're talking with. I'm not gossiping, you know, anyway, but there's a way to kind of like, steer it but it's it takes the noticing in the moment and sometimes like we're so busy in it that we forget that we you know our brains have the capacity to, ha to hold multiple perspectives in there right so yeah. um it, it's and it's um I, I think another one can be also like just noticing either your own tone of voice or the person you're speaking with and it's if some you know it start to you hear you feel something it's like you can pause and say, you know, I'm noticing your, your tone of voice. Is there some way we can make this interaction go smoother? Or even like, you know, I'm noticing I'm getting kind of upset. Can we? So it's kind of like in the live moment, shifting it up a bit rather than just continuing and letting it, the ball roll down the hill and get out of control. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yes, yes. Uh, I love the, uh, the idea of observing. Uh, which is hard to do in a spontaneous conversation. You know, it's right. not not like a business meeting where you have an agenda. Uh, you start start a discussion and uh, uh, it takes a tangent this way and that way, and before you know it, you're talking about stuff you didn't want to. You really don't want to <laughs> talk about. <laughs> right, uh, right. But it it does take that moment of observation. You know, being a fly on the wall in your own room, mm. watching exactly. yourself. Yeah. Uh, and it takes a certain amount of um, awareness of what you're doing at the time, what you're saying and, and why you're saying it and where you're going with it, as well as the other person. You know, what's their agenda? Why are they talking about this? And if it's meaningful and, you know, re Michelle, this is very good advice. Hard to do, I would say. To, to mm. We can get better at it, though. It's, it comes with practice, right? Anything mm. comes with practice. But I think, I think Michelle, that you came up with something that we all could try, and at the worst, maybe get a, a, a chuckle rather than annoyance out of it. Say, cut. Let's take a <laughs> ten minute break. Go to the craft services table, okay? Yeah. And let's come back here and have. Let's think this through a little bit before we continue the conversation. Be the director. Of yeah. The in other words, basically diffuse that that uh, uh, that growing tension that the conversation, which maybe is not broad enough, is causing everybody in the room to have. And everybody take a break for thirty seconds or for two minutes or whatever mm. it is. And well, you and know, yeah, I mean, art that's interesting because every once in a while somebody will do that. They yeah. will say, just interrupt the conversation and say, "Well, look, I got to go now," which is a good way to. <laughs> Change the subject, right. like, uh, right, which is right. a good way of saying I don't give a damn what you're talking about. Okay, yeah. you're really pissing me off. I got to yeah. go now. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, I mean, it can happen just in a casual conversation as well. Like somebody starts to tell you about something that 
you know, feel your eyes are starting to glaze over and you don't really want to do that to that person. So you might like, you know, I know we were talking about this and now you're telling me about something which I don't know much about. Is there a way, I'd love to hear more about this. So you're kind of inviting them, like basically I can stay more attentive if you talk about this versus that. And you know, sometimes it's kind of a little, can be a little messy when you, when you first start practicing doing this. But I mean, I have to say for myself, this is a regular skill I use in sessions with clients. Cause you know, we were talking about one thing and then they're suddenly telling me about something else, which I have the sense that it's just distracting from yeah. what the meat of it is. And so I kind of like, you know, I want to pause you for a second. Can we go back to there? So, you know, that's something obviously, you don't want somebody to be doing that in a regular conversation, but <laughs> although I yeah. tend to do it sometimes in my personal life, but, but it's basically like um, catching, like, you know, for instance, couples might be, you know, whenever they go on a trip together, there's always this dynamic or one person gets stressed and the other person, you know, it's like, okay, let's look at how we are when we go on trips. Like, it's having conversations about an event in advance or whenever we cook together, there's always this issue of you use too many dishes or, you know, and so the idea is like, hopefully you can kind of smooth over the edges mm -hmm. and it, but you can't just, you know, it, it happens in the moment and then you move on. It's let's talk about how that can go better. So it's all these kinds of ways of making adjustments, I guess, with each other, either in the moment or even later to go back and to smooth it over. So these are the kind of things I get excited about because I feel like people tend to think that, oh, it happened the way it did and nothing I can do about it. But there's always a revisiting you can do, you know, like the, you know, what's it called? The Monday morning quarterback, quarterback or something yeah. like that, right? Well, I think uh, yes, that, the, chapter, the that. title of your new book may be easier said than done. <laughs> yes, yes, and it's about practicing and celebrating when you, hey, I'm so glad I, I, I steered the conversation away from that topic, which I can't stand to get into, you know, whatever, something right. like that. So yeah. we just get to practice and get Michelle, better. This Michelle, is, this is a wonderful topic because it's so common. Uh, mm -hmm. We talk about all kinds of uh, relationship issues, but this seems to me to be the kind of thing you run into every day multiple times. Right. With people you like, people you don't like. Um, great, great practical advice. I'm zooming out from now on. <laughs> right. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.